What is going on world? It's your boy Mars and welcome to the yard. Today we're going to be talking about something that I titled urban genocide. Now you may be asking yourself, what is urban genocide? Well, first word urban, second word genocide. I'm sure we all know what urban means, but if you don't know what genocide means, I'll go ahead and break it down to you. And here's the definition, the deliberate killing of a large group of people, especially those of a particular ethnic group or nation. So we got it, urban genocide. We on the same page, you over there in the corner, you got it. You right here in the front where sir, you got it. To my right, you got it, sir. Background audience, you got it. All right, capiche, we good. Now, um, it's funny, well, it's not funny. Um, it, it's actually, it is funny. It's funny how my mind works and the things that I think about and how everything in my life becomes full circle. Um, at one point, and you know, I was so on it with, you know, crime stats in America, you know, I, I, I really just lived and breathed that stuff, you know, and that's what it was in my life. And I, I stayed on top of it. And, you know, lately I fell off, but it, something interesting happened the other day. I was watching, um, the, uh, CNN special report when it broke that Joshua Brown was murdered on last Saturday. Now, for those of you who don't know who Joshua Brown is, he was the uh, key witness in the case against Amber Geiger, where she was convicted of the uh, 10 years in prison for killing her neighbor because she mistakenly walked into his apartment. So she says she thought it was her own. Um, I can't speak to that. I wasn't there, but the jury found her guilty of it. So that's that. We'll just leave that there. But it began to make me think like, man, you know, Every time I'm on Instagram, Facebook, or, you know, just on random places or just around through the city of Chicago, you know, I see all, I either see red tape and that signifies shooting, um, or I just see all these little makeshift memorials on the side of the road. And it's just like, man, like it has to be a better way. So, you know, I dived into some numbers because, you know, I was truly interested in, I tell you the things that I unearthed, it, it truly made me sad and I, I just couldn't understand it, and I, I want to know why, but I'll share some of the uh, statistics or the stats that I uh, uncovered with you guys, and you know, later on we can have a conversation about this, so uh, without further ado, we'll just go ahead and get into it. So uh, I'll read these off, and I may repeat them so you guys can definitely get them. Um, African Americans make up 14% of the U.S. population, yet we account for 51% of the nation's homicide victims. I'll read that one more time for you. African Americans make up 14% of the US population, yet we account for 51% of the nation's homicide victims. 14%, 51% homicides. And we're a small number at 14%. Second stat, nationally, 87% of black homicide victims are killed by guns. I'll read that for you one more time. Nationally, 87% of black homicide victims are killed by guns. Okay, so we're well over half. So we know we have an issue in our community. Um, and of course, you know, if you don't know, homicide rates are the highest amongst black teens and young adults. This is really a national crisis with these staggering numbers, but virtually this issue goes unnoticed. More than 85% of black homicide victims are killed by guns. One more time. More than 85% of black homicide victims are killed by guns. So there's 2% of people that may be killed by knives or being beat up or however else you can die or be murdered. My question I pose to you, my yardies, why is it that we have such a higher rate of gun violence and death in our communities of color? I'm not talking about any other community, just in a community of color. Is it because of the lack of fathers in the household? Is it the finances, the education? What is it? I, because I would like to understand because I, I don't believe for one moment in my head, this is what we were designed for, to murder, murder each other and be slaves. If you think about it at the rate we're going 300 years from now, we're gonna be extinct and we're gonna be the lost tribe of America. What happened to the African Americans of America? We're gonna be on some like Mayan Indian stuff or something like that. We're gonna be extinct. And it's, it's crazy. It's, it, it, it wrecks my mind to think that we're doing this to ourselves. And I'm not, I'm not sure what's the answer, but 
I'm just posing the conversation and see where we can go from there. But we all know the Second Amendment entitles every American citizen the right to bear arms with the exception of a person that has been convicted of a felony. Okay, so why is this why is this tied into what we're talking about, you ask, right? Felons can't buy guns. So how are supposed it felonies or i'm not even gonna say felons it, it, sometimes the guys are repeat offenders and we know that the guns you know aren't being purchased in the store but i digress on that i'll get back to that later i'm gonna go off some more uh facts for you really quick black males account for 37 percent of the total male prison population white males account for 32 percent hispanic males count for 22% and white females comprise 49% of the population and the black female accounts for 22% of the prison population. Okay, so more white females than black females in prison. Okay, so now let's just touch back on something with the felons with the guns. I was watching a movie recently, it was called White Boy Ricky and it was uh, produced and Matthew McConaughey starred in it as uh, White Boy Ricky's father. And the movie depicts his father uh, heading out to these gun shows, buying guns and then turning around and have his son or he would take the guns and sell them on the streets of Detroit to all the gangsters. So with that being said, where is the illegal, where, where is the flow of these illegal guns coming from in our communities? Is it a bunch of Caucasian males pulling up in their Tahoes or whatever it may be, selling them to our neighborhood kids? I mean, I, I I know sometimes we some sometimes you know gun stores get robbed, but for the majority of it, where are all these firearms coming from? In, in my personal opinion, I really feel that we need some type of better oversight on gun control. But of course, America doesn't want that because if you think we were founded by violence and I we will always be violent, if you just think about to the our conception. Just going back to the original times, we had the Pilgrims and the Indians, and then let's skip forward a little bit, we had the Boston Tea Party. Now, if you guys don't know about that, just go pick up a history book and just read up on that, and you guys will understand where I'm coming from with this. So, you know, it's an issue that really needs to be talked about. So, where are the guns coming from? Can anyone tell me that? I don't know. You don't know. So, whatever. But it's something that needs to really be handled, because to me is really out of control now i say this and i say this and i don't want anyone to be offended by my next segment that i'm going to be talking about because like i said this is really just a conversation i'm just here passing out the information for my people so we can possibly be, do better or just have a better understanding of what we're going through as a community a whole um i want to talk about mass shootings um this year alone uh, there have been 289 people killed from mass shootings. Now, the press is all over this. It, 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 every look around. Breaking news, mass shooter for Daytona, Ohio, Odessa, Texas, Virginia, uh, El Paso, Texas. I, it, it's all over news. It makes the headline news everywhere. And like I said, a loss of life is a loss of life. And I'm not sitting up here saying that one life is better than the other so please don't take it and think that i'm saying that what i'm saying is we make it a national crisis for mass shootings but yet in our inner cities if you look at some of the numbers just amount just the same amount of people are getting killed on a monthly basis as they are in the mass shooting that may occur every two months or every three months here i'll just give you some stats on um, August 3rd, the El Paso, uh, the El Paso, Texas mass shooting, uh, 20 people were, 22 people were killed, and that was on August 3rd. Okay, so the month of August in Chicago, there were 46 victims killed. All right, on August 3rd alone in Chicago, there were three people murdered by guns. That's not bad. I guess that's average for a city, but the total monthly total is 46. Okay, so let's take that one number and i want you guys to just follow me with some math chicago had 46 murders in the month of august the El Paso shooting claimed the lives of 22 victims 
The Daytona, Ohio mass shooting claimed the lives of nine victims. That was August 4. The Odessa, Texas and Midland killed seven people. That was August 31st. And the one on Virginia Beach killed a total of 12 people. And that dates back to May 31st of 2019. So if my math is right off the top of my head, roughly 51 people were killed in the first half of this year in mass shootings but in one of our second largest cities in the United States or third 46 people were killed in one month let that sink in now you you guys can be like hey that's just Chicago okay well let's go in to dive into something else have you guys heard of a place called St. Louis um I don't know if you guys heard of it um but uh there's a famous rapper by the name of Nelly. He's from there. You have Chingy's from there. You have Jay Quan that's from there. You have uh, Sweetie Pies that was on. What channel was that on? The OWN Network at one point. Um, but Cedric the Entertainer, you guys get the point. But I say this to say this. St. Louis in 2019 so far, and this is just going back to August, they had over, they have over 138 homicides in 2019 with 21 of them listed as african-american that is over 90 percent 90 percent of the people killed in st louis were black 138 homicides and 121 of them were listed as african-american wow now i can go give you stats from louisville uh Miami, Miami's not as high, but uh, I can just give you stats from all around the United States and it will paint the picture and you guys will really just see what I'm really trying to get at. There's a change that needs to happen. There's something that we need to stand up and, and we just have to stop being divided. We just all need to come together. You know, honestly, we all came together at one point to get Barack Obama elected or or we do the things we want to do, but it shouldn't be a one-time thing. It should be a constant thing because honestly, you can sit up there and say, hey, I'm going to talk to my senators and my local politicians and my mayors and all that. But at, at the end of the day, that doesn't help you. You have to start first. It has to be done within the inside out. We'd have to do it ourselves. And then at some point, maybe the federal government will take notice and maybe they'll come in and give us a helping hand. But we can't wait around for that. We have to do it on our own because if we don't do it on our own, no one's gonna do it before, no one's gonna do it for us. And before you know it, we're gonna be extinct. So this could just be a madman rambling, talking on the mic, but I just want us to be better as people. You know, I, I, I didn't mean to take this first, take my first podcast and go so left with it, but when would be the right time to talk about something like this? I, I feel like in a whole, we are underserved with justice and everything else in life. So I don't know, guys. This is just my opinion. I'm not gonna hold you. Uh, just make sh you know. Just 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 think about it, guys. I want you guys to really think about it. But until next time, man. You guys have a great day. Y'all stay blessed, man. Y'all stay up, man. Peace.